afraid I sing this song. This is from the great poet from Tamil Nadu, Subramanya Bharati. And he said, even if the big blue sky hit on your forehead, be fearless, be fearless. That's what gives me the courage. Four hundred miles, one million steps, no problem. It's captured the imagination and if we think that, the re that this is a walk, it's not. The purpose of Pusha's walk is to talk to people, is to meet people along the route. And Push is, of course, walking for climate justice, but as an Indian, I want to make a connection with the challenges that we continue to face. Because when Push talks about climate justice, he talks about the people who are enduring, unremitting poverty and hardship who are the most vulnerable. When I saw they were broken, beaten, but they never gave up. All of them wanted to get back to life again. The farmers went back to sow again. The women want to build a house again. So that's the hope and the promise is the one I'm carrying. While I tell the stories of disaster, I tell there is hope. And somehow I have to get cash. I know the likes of Malini will help me to do that. Yeah, get cash, go there and be their representative and tell the truth because this man says those three things. Look for truth, speak truth, speak truth to power. The climate emergency and climate justice, it not only hits poor, it doesn't see the difference between the rich and the poor. If I had one thing, mm. take your money away from the oil companies and give it to the countries and people who are suffering from climate change. We are all charged up at the moment to tell the governments to do something about it. That is fine. But I think we also need to tell ourselves, but everybody else around us, that it is everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And everybody can do something about it. Sheffield Council is actually doing some amazing things to stop flooding and to restore the environment. Particularly in this area, they've developed simple ways, they've developed natural environmental responses to climate change. We've tried to engage different people. So we were talking about, let's say, let's do a Buddhist walk in, in the woodlands. What would be a Buddhist walk? Let's talk about Islam and ecology. Let's talk about, for example, the Sukkot festival with, within the Jewish community. We're doing all that tied in with faith, trying to bring them around and getting them into, into the woodlands. So, how many heard that there is a meeting called COP26 before I came? Did you know? COP26 is the 26th year of the UN Climate Conference happening in Glasgow. Close to 200 world leaders are assembling to discuss solutions for the climate crisis. Topics include green energy solutions, reduction of carbon footprint and keeping temperature rise under 1.5 degrees till 2050. Many climate activists have walked to this conference and voices from the global south especially have raised alarm bells citing climate emergency. It's no more climate impact, it's climate emergency. Can you say that? It's climate, climate emergency. emergency. If a child in a, in a poor household in India gets really hot fever, 
the fever is going on, the temperature is going on, the mother actually would put a little cloth with water on the head of the child. Why? To reduce the temperature, otherwise the, it will be fatal for the child. It's exactly what's happening to the planet. Europe is being hit. Did you know Germany had floods this year? And many people died, never before. Greece, they had fire. Britain, you had floods. So it's here as well. So the climate emergency is here now. And that's why I walk. Why do I walk? Mahatma Gandhi did that. He said, you know, when you see something so unjust, each one of us, each one of you, have to make up our mind to take a stand. That's why he said, be the change that you want to be. Every night someone from this beautiful land is hosting me because I don't spend money. I want people to give me a bed to sleep, a hot shower, some food, and a great story and conversation. This time I have found Britain is changing because the students have, two years ago, made this government to declare climate emergency. It's you who did it. Look what I've got here. What is this? What is this? Yeah, well, many of these students, if not all of these students, push, have written a message to the leaders, the 200 world leaders, for you to take to Glasgow. Okay. Thank you so much. So I've got to give it to Mr. Alok Sharma. Yeah. What if he says, come later? <laughs> what would I tell him? Just... You have to take it now. Yeah. Sorry, let's add into the... Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for this. It's fantastic. Letters from the children of Heron Hill School. I'm grateful. My favorite place is every home. Each of the, them, they don't even know me. And each home has a great story to tell. Whether they come from uh, a, a, a belief and a faith, or they come from a scientific knowledge. And then the schools I have been, including yours. Uh, so far, I've met about 2,300 people directly. Half of them are schools. Those are my favorite places. You know why? Why? You are my leader. in the immediate vicinity of the proposed mine are very much in favour of it. But of course now, with the, um, with the increasing concern about climate change, uh, there's been a lot of opposition. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm part of a climate group called Slack, and um, I got the opportunity to uh, be part of this film to talk about the Cumbrian coal mine. Uh, here, uh, the challenges are with uh, things called peat bogs, which trap loads of carbon into the atmosphere, but um, Cumbria has really big problems with peat bogs because they're getting uh, destroyed by human activity, um, and that's threatening climate change because it means that the carbon's being released into the atmosphere instead of being stored. In his book, Chris Funk, director Climate Hazard Center, Santa Barbara, California, says that the climate hazard is not happening in 2050. It is happening now. We are seeing an increasing number of droughts, fire and floods, sometimes in the same region. In Kenya, they were hit by floods and drought, one after the other. And poor people are hit first, worst and hardest. Particularly women because I was able to meet about 1.5 million across in this four month time, and they were hit first. Can you repeat after me? First, worst, hardest. Okay. Here in Keswick, we know the effects of climate change only too well. We moved here in 2002, and in 19 years, we have seen three floods. 2005, 
2009 and 2015. And each flood has been worse than the one before. Uh, yes. But so your Kelsey Kitsap has faced yeah. the impact of it. Is it fair to say that? Yes, it was even worse in 2015. That whole slope was cut into by the river, swinging, cutting into the riverbank and destabilizing that slope. Look, Scotland is telling us, <laughs> telling to the leaders that look what's happening here. And even the most cynical person is saying, this is not Scotland, this is not the way it happened. Yeah, it's not far away. Everyone thinks that things are far away, mm. 20 years away, okay. 50 years away. Okay. Do ele Go electric by 2030. Yeah. Right? But nobody. So they are all delaying. Today. Yeah. An MP called them the delayers. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah. really act today. Yeah. For what you want tomorrow. Speaking to some of the people locally, there are businesses that are being affected. You know, we've got quite a lot of flood areas in Moffat, and okay. you know, it's quite scary to think w what kind of things we might be facing in the near future. Yeah. Not not too long. Yeah. Here in Keswick, our lake has ri risen, I reckon, by a good two meters. We were down there last Sunday uh, when the lake was really quite low and now it is high enough to cover most of the boat landings where the launches come in. It's about a million steps now I've taken to come here. This is where the meeting happened. We're supposed to have 192, but I think about 112 or 20 leaders are coming. They've been discussing for the last 26 years in order to come to some kind of a very clear plan of action to bring the global warming down. But that requires great statesmanship, visionary leadership and effort. But what is even more important, which they can do quite easily, is to put the money for adaptation for those who are given up with their lives and livelihood and everything else. They say it is our right and you need justice and that is the key message I'm bringing here. Some of the commitments at COP26 include a transition to 100% zero emission cars and vans by 2040, not later than 2035 in leading markets. 130 trillion US dollars private capital which has been committed towards the net zero economy and climate risk disclosure and transparency for public and private entities. There's 86,400 seconds in a day, so 86,400 football pitches of trees are cut down every day. You world leaders think you're doing something, but actually all you're saying is blah, blah, blah. What do we want? that we cannot solve a crisis with the same methods that got us into it in the first place. Climate activists were disappointed by COP26 failing to meet expectations. Greta Thunberg says that COP26 was a two week long celebration of business as usual and blah blah blah. Greenpeace says that carbon offset is a scam and COP26 did not manage to secure the $100 billion per year in climate finance that was desperately needed and none of the commitments made by the countries are truly binding. So the message for me is that we need to look after creation and we need to invest in creation and not just by words, we want to see the money. Mon Thank you.
this idea that you would make this personal journey, that you would walk a million steps uh, to demonstrate your commitment to climate action and to climate justice um, is powerful in itself. But also it's the way that you carry yourself, the warmth, the generosity of spirit. They would like this to go to the Prime Minister of Okay. Can I, can I give it to you? I will do my best. Maybe small, but we've already done 100,000 steps. Now, I'm all by myself, and that's a bit frightening. But don't worry, I have the good wishes of hundreds and hundreds of people, which is my body armor. Half to three, four, to Milton Keynes. What I was taking in a bit, but I'm okay. Paul, good morning. How, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to walk to Clapham. Yeah. And then you're walking to Ingleton. Yeah. I have to walk another two and a half miles to Ingleton. It's a rainy day, but I had a good time. Uh, <laughs> hi, Bruce. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, so what are you yeah. doing here? Uh, standing in a car park in Casterton, yeah. uh, in the rain. Walk along, Jai Jagat. Sing along, Jai Jagat. Walk along, Jai Jagat. Sing along, Jai Jagat. Yeah. Okay, so this is part of the coast-to-coast -coast cycle route following the, old, the bed of the old railway line from Keswick to Penrith through this tunnel up here. 